So a little bit of a forewarning before I start talking here. If you are in a good mood currently, click out of the video. Don't watch it because this is definitely going to spoil your mood. But if you're just kind of already feeling meh, then uh, stick around because this is very, very important news. So let's talk about climate change and um, how the situation looks even more grim than we had previously expected. Because back in 2018, we all kind of had this wake-up call when we saw that the IPCC gave us 12 years to act in order to avert catastrophic levels of climate change. Now, predictably, right-wingers accuse them of being too alarmist. Well, it turns out there's a new study that purports that actually the IPCC wasn't being too alarmist. They were actually being too conservative. If we don't take massive action, it's highly likely that humans go extinct by 2050. 2050. I think when a lot of people talked about the prospect of human beings going extinct in the event the planet became uninhabitable, you know, we always pictured 2100, 2150, and that's even if human beings were to go extinct because, you know, climate change isn't necessarily a death sentence for human beings, per se. It is for a lot of species, but maybe human beings can figure out some way to still survive after climate change just destroys our uh, environment. But what this new study shows based on a model is that it's highly likely that we could go extinct by 2050. All right, so let's dig into this. As Nafiz Ahmad of Vice reports, the analysis published by the Breakthrough National Center for Climate Restoration, a think tank in Melbourne, Australia, describes climate change as a near to midterm existential threat to human civilization and sets out a plausible scenario of where business as usual could lead over the next 30 years. The paper argues that the potentially extremely serious outcomes of climate-related security threats are often far more probable than conventionally assumed, but almost impossible to quantify because they fall outside the human experience of the last thousand years. On our current trajectory, the report warns planetary and human systems are reaching a point of no return by mid-century, in which the prospect of a largely uninhabitable Earth leads to the breakdown of nations and the international order. The only way to avoid the risks of this scenario is what the report describes as akin in scale to the World War II emergency mobilization, but this time focused on rapidly building out a zero emissions industrial system to set in train the restoration of a safe climate. The scenario warns that our current trajectory will likely lock in at least 3 degrees Celsius of global heating, which in turn could trigger further amplifying feedbacks, unleashing further warming. This would drive the accelerating collapse of key ecosystems, including coral reef systems, the Amazon rainforest, and in the Arctic. The results would be devastating. Some 1 billion people would be forced to attempt to relocate from unlivable conditions and 2 billion would face scarcity of water supplies. Agriculture would collapse in the subtropics and food production would suffer dramatically worldwide. The internal cohesion of nation states like the United States and China would unravel. Wow. That is a lot to take in. So just take a moment, let it marinate, and we'll kind of talk about some of these implications. Because I think that what this is saying here in that, you know, they're, they're looking post-climate catastrophe. Because what other reports like the IPCC say is that, look, if we don't prevent a two degree Celsius increase in global temperatures, that will lead to climate catastrophe. But they stop there, right? But to be clear, what this study is doing is it is taking this a step further. They crafted a model that is able to predict what would happen after climate catastrophe happens. How would that impact governments? How would that impact international stability? And because there would be so many swift changes, governments wouldn't be able to adapt. There'd be mass hysteria, mass chaos. And that's why they're saying their prediction is a lot more grim than the others. Now, 
let me just be clear about one thing. They're not purporting that human extinction is a certainty by 2050. But what they are saying here is in their scenario that they constructed based on current projections and what they can anticipate, well, if we take into account a plausible worst case scenario, something that could possibly come to fruition, then this is what could happen. It could lead to extinction in the near to midterm. So let's just be um, extra clear here. This is not saying the world's ending and we have uh, 30 years or 31 years, you know, so <laughs> do what you can now. This is not what that is saying, okay? This is based on a model and we haven't really heard from other scientists because usually when these types of studies come out, I like to hear from the rest of the scientific community so we can, you know, just kind of gauge how accurate they think this is, looking at the methodology and whatnot. But I mean, is this believable? Yeah, I think it's believable. This is no longer, oh, future generations. This is now going to affect us, like when we're older. In a very serious way, because even if the worst case scenario doesn't come to fruition, well, what if, you know, extinction of human beings happens in the mid-range? We're still going to, in, in the mid-term range, we're still going to see civilization unfold in a really disgusting, apocalyptic way. And, you know, if, if countries can't adapt, then, of course, they're not going to know how to deal with mass migration they're not going to know how to deal with political instability on global levels. It's just going to be pure fucking chaos. So I still haven't really processed this study. Again, I want to hear from other scientists about the plausibility of this model because I can't assess this model and say that this is incredibly accurate, right? Like the, the IPCC, what they say, generally speaking, you can accept because these are global scientists that are coming together and they're producing these studies. But this is, you know, one study. And it's just one thing to consider. But basically, the takeaway and the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because, once again, I think it needs to be made very clear that we have to get our shit together. There's nothing else I can say about this. We need to get our shit together. Otherwise, we are totally fucked. Not just as a planet, but as a species. We're the dinosaurs right now, but the difference is we see an asteroid zooming across the sky, but we actually know that it's coming, and we have the capability to take action and stop it. It's just a matter of will we or won't we. We're playing chicken with the apocalypse, and that's a game that I don't want to play.